Good morning and welcome to the broadcast today and thank you for joining me again on Wednesday morning here at the Mount Zion AME Zion Church in Montgomery, Alabama. I'm glad that you have joined me and I am excited. It's January the 31st. We're one day away from February the 1st and from Indeed, here we are, uh, and today we're going to brag on the power of God and the supremeness of his power and what God is doing in our lives and, and in the lives of uh, all of humankind and in the world. And of course, the text is going to remind Israel to be encouraged because God has the power. Now, the right hand represents the power. God has all power in his hand, or his hands, if you prefer the plural. And so he's the omnipotent God, the all-powerful God, and that speaks volumes to everybody that believes. Now, sometimes we are uh, prone to get a little rattled, <coughs> excuse me, to be shaken because of what's happening in society, we might lose our cool or lose our faith, might wane a little bit uh, because of what's going on in the world. But listen to this, the power ultimately is in the hands of God. And so God by his omnipotence rules the world. And you don't have to worry about this, that, and the other, because God is going to be God in the midst of everything. Now, I am going to dedicate today's broadcast uh, in memory of Mr. Mosley Murray, uh, who was, is, was a member of Mount Zion and has gone on to be with the Lord, and uh, Miss Randy Stitt, who was a faithful of me, Zionite, of St. Catherine's AME Zion Church in New Rochelle, New York, uh, and was a connectional officer in our AME Zion Church uh, at one time. And then since we're on uh, the eve of Black History Month, I decided to start Black History Month today. And I know somebody said to me, well, you can't do that. You can't start Black, I start Black History Month every month because every month, every day I wake up is Black History Month, and every day that every African-American who's made contributions uh, to America, to the kingdom, it's uh, Black History Month, okay? Now, you'll see in the background, if you're looking at Facebook or YouTube, uh, there's an upper picture and a lower picture of the same man, and his name is Reverend Dr. Solomon Snowden Say Sr., my primary mentor for this AME Zion discipline in terms of our doctrine and our polity. And so our broadcast is also dedicated uh, to Reverend Dr. Solomon Snowden Say Sr., who was also married to Mrs. Uh, Karen Madison Say. And they gave birth to uh, four children one being the first female black doctor in Montgomery, Alabama. I believe that's correct. The late uh, Dr. Hakelin Say Wilson. And they also gave birth to sons Cameron and Stanley Say, uh, outstanding uh, professor and businessman for uh, IBM and for other schools. And to attorney Solomon Snowden Say Jr., who was a civil rights attorney, and my God, I love being in his presence right here in Montgomery, Alabama. Now, lastly today, I've got to dedicate today's broadcast in memory of a little poor country lady from Wetumpka, Alabama, and her name is Cora Rebecca Crenshaw Shuford, uh, who was married to my father, uh, Robert Lee Shuford, and the two of them gave birth to 11 of us and I salute my late mom who made sure uh, all of her children 
graduated from high school and went on to get a college or technical college uh, degree to the PhD level. We loved her for that because she was so very, very diligent to make sure her children got an education. Well, with all of that, it's, it's Black History Month Eve. But remember, it's Black History Month too because we're here. Let's pray. Father, I give you thanks today. You are our source. You're the great one. I adore you. I cannot live without you. You're the one who gives revelation. You're the one who gives me insight. You're the giver of every good. There is no fault, no fallacies, no errors, no mistakes. I praise you for being righteous for being the holy God that you are and for doing what you do. I ask you always in studies, give us revelation, give us insight into the word of God and give us humility of head and heart so that we are not just hearers of your word, but doers of the word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, we are going to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 through 13, and verses 25 through 31. And, <clears throat> excuse me, while you're turning to Isaiah 40, we're going to be talking about power without equal. Uh, you know, there are people who always talk about that power and what they would do. Well, there is a power in the universe who does not have equal. And of course, the power that is without equal is the almighty God or the omnipotent God. Sometimes as children of God, our faith is somewhat waning because we focus on uh, the present day situation. We focus on the trouble. Uh, maybe for a short span of time, ignore that the power is in the Lord's hand, is in God's hand. And remember, no matter what people are saying, his power is without equal. Now, let's get to Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to be getting reading verse number 12. Israel has been deported exiled into Babylon, and while they're in Babylon, they've got to stay there 70 years. There was no quick fix, no quick getting out of it, but God says to them in Isaiah chapter 40, the power is in your God's hand. And so for Israel to hear that God had the power in his hand, they could have hope, they could be encouraged, and they could go on in faith because God was saying to them, don't look at what you're experiencing. Don't consider that what you're in is the end of the world. I am coming through for you. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to make the crooked straight. I'm leveling down the mountains. I'm building up the valleys. And I'm making a highway through the desert and I'm raining when I get ready for it to rain. And so God reminds us as his children, the power is in my hands. Look at verse number 12, Isaiah chapter 40. Who has measured the waters of the sea in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span? enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? 
who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counselor has instructed him? Now, of course, God raises these rhetorical questions because Israel had to be reminded the power is in the hands of God. The power of God is unequaled by humankind. Now, I, I know this America, uh, we, we, we boast about being the most powerful nation in the world. But the power is really in the hand of God. You know, God could send uh, an earthquake, and I'm not saying he is, and I'm not saying he sent the ones that you have experienced, but I say God could. God could allow something to happen that would be so devastating, we would understand the power is not in our hands. You know, I'm often reminded when there's a natural disaster that the power is not in our hands. I was reminded September 11, uh, 2011, that the power on September 9, 2011, uh, September 11th, I think, uh, 2011, when the Twin Towers uh, were, were bombed and the plane crashed in what Pennsylvania and uh, there at the Pentagon. Listen. I'm often reminded that the power is not in our hands. Uh, somebody dies in the hospital. The power is not in our hands. Um, and some other doctors from this church and this community who said to me, Reverend Schubert, we know that we don't have the power because if we had the power, we would never lose patients. We are practicing medicine, but the power is in the hand of God. And the first uh, MD that said that to me was the late uh, Dr. Pryor. And I can't remember his first name from the old ship, AME Zion Church. But Dr. Pryor was my first African-American uh, physician. And he said to me, Reverend Schubert, I understand perfectly clear that I don't have the power, that the power is in God's hands. And then I've had uh, the chief of surgeon, uh, the first black chief of surgeon at uh, Jackson Hospital, Dr. Wesley Barry of Advanced Surgical Associates said to me one day, he said, you know, uh, we understand that power is not in our hands. He said, we might want or believe or think sometimes that it is. He said, but sometimes I can do everything right and everything goes wrong. He said, and then sometimes it seems like nothing goes right. He says, you know, sometimes it's like we want to uh, think or, or feel like we're like a little God or something. He said, then you get the shocking, uh, you get the shock again that you're not because your patient dies and you can't revive them or something else happened and it's beyond your control. And so we understand God said to Israel, who is like me? There is no one parallel to me. Nobody can measure the waters. Nobody can mark off the heavens. Nobody has weighed the mountains or the hills and nobody can direct the spirit of God or be a counselor to God. No matter, you know, uh, there are people who don't believe that God exists. And then there are people who don't believe that you can uh, find out, excuse me, wh whether there is a God who exists or not. But listen, there are those of us who believe with all of our hearts because we've had an experience with him. We've walked with him. We've taught with him more than one or two times, but a whole lot of time. And God has demonstrated that he's God all by God's self. Look at it. I've got to skip from verse 13 down to verse 25. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal? Now, this is what God said to Israel. Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created thee. Well, it certainly wasn't us. 
I don't see anybody manufacturing a sky or, or manufacturing a real mountain or manufacturing a sea. Oh, yeah, I've seen some, uh, what we call them, some natural bodies or rather some man-made uh, lakes and that kind of thing. But but who manufactured the oceans? Hmm. That is that is that will solve that right. And who who uh, created the rivers uh, around the globe? We didn't we didn't have anything to do with that. Now look at this. Uh, the Lord said, "Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength." mighty in power, not one is missing. No matter who we are, who can tell the stars when to come out at night and who can summon the moon and say shine or who can tell the sun blaze today or who can send the clouds and the darkness and make the sky that was a beautiful uh, baby blanket blue turn into uh, a darkness that we do not understand and cannot comprehend. Only the almighty God who is unequal uh, in his power can do that. You know, we're, we're God made us smart. He created us in his image after his likeness. We have the ability and the capacity to do a lot of things that God uh, blesses us to do. We can think like God. We can uh, act like God in our goodness and, and with compassion and kindness and forgiveness and goodwill and all that. But, but who can do these kinds of things that Isaiah said for God in this text? And the answer is simple. Nobody. Nobody but the Lord. Uh, we, we've been singing for many years. Nobody. Nobody but the Lord. Nobody but the Lord. Nobody but the Lord. Nobody but the Lord. He is the only one who can do these kinds of things. Now look at what uh, Isaiah says for God. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right hand is disregarded by my God? Why would I say that? I shouldn't say that. You should not say that. Nobody's way is hidden from God. You can't hide from the Lord. No. He watches over the earth beyond human comprehension. Now, I can't watch over anything except the space where I am. I can't watch over uh, really, I can't watch over the space where I am because and I'm in a space. I'm in my office right now with beautiful stained glass windows behind me, but I can't even watch over the office. But God watches over, listen, the universe, the mountains the sky, the sea, the land, the flowers, the trees, the birds, and the bees. God watches over all of the institutions, educational institutions, the governmental institutions, and then the billions of people on the earth. Inconceivable for a human mind, but by faith, we believe it, and not only does he watch over all that, remember it says he knows how many stars up there and knows all of their names. God is so great. Uh, verse 28, let me hurry. Have you, this, this, these are some of my favorite verses, and I like to say that. I'm reminding you that I say it all the time, but these are some of my favorite verses. Listen to this. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Now, look again. 
And again, these are what we call rhetorical questions. Uh, God knew that Israel would, would immediately say, well, God, you the man. You're the one. You're the only one. Uh, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. Yes, I have heard that God is the everlasting God. I've heard it. I believe it. I've witnessed his power. I've seen it over and over and over again. I know he's the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. God has never told me, I'm tired. You know, and I'm, you know, I say it every week. I say, I'm tired. Uh, sometimes two, three times a week, I say, uh, I'm tired now. And somebody said, well, what, what'd you do today? Say, so, well, I, I taught uh, three, four Bible studies today. Said, hey, you, that's all you did? As if that was nothing. Listen, or I've gone to hospitals, or uh, I've buried the dead. And whenever I'm burying the dead, it just extracts all of my energy out of me. I don't, I don't, I, I, I think I understand what's going on. Uh, but every every funeral, I'm just I'm just um, exhausted at the end of that because it just seems like all my energy just gets pulled out. Uh, whether that's emotional energy and and psychological energy and physical energy, it's it's just gone. But listen to this. He said, uh, God never grows faint. Never gets faint and never grows weary. God's not like you. God's not like me. You know, we can dress up and look pretty good and be just as weak, we say in the country, as water because we don't have that power in us. But God never grows weak nor gets weary. His understanding is unsearchable. That's true too. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I guarantee you hundreds of times I have come to this church on a Sunday morning exhausted from uh, a week, from seven days, exhausted. And at some at one point for 21 years, I was pastoring two churches uh, you know, so I preached at one church at eight and came to this church at, at 10 and I would be so tired sometime. By the time I got to Mount Zion, I'd be so tired. And I would say to God, Lord, help me. Lord, you know, if you don't help me, I can't make it. And so God would hear me praying before I entered the pulpit area. And God, when I stood up to preach, and sometime before I stood up to preach, The man who had no power had power again. Physical power, emotional power, psychological power, spiritual power. And not only was I able to lead worship and preach, sometimes I felt like I could run with the greyhound or the cheetahs or the leopards because God had renewed me. Let, let me read the last few verses. Verse 30, even youths will faint and, and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now I know something about youth being uh, weary and exhausted. Uh, I have an 18 year old daughter who uh, after they march and uh, play in the band and go through their routines and they're having fun. But uh, it's amazing to me. She'll be tired. 
and I'll say, are you going to do something? She said, nope, dad. I just, I just want to get my rest now. So you want to go out to eat and sometimes she'll say, no, dad, I just, I just want to get my rest now. I'm tired. So the young people get tired and the youth grow weary. And I used to be like that, but you know, um, I can get tired now and I'm not youthful, but the, even the youthful get tired and grow weary. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. So God said to Israel, wait on me. You're in exile. You're in Babylon. You're in captivity. You've got to go through this. It's 70 years of it, but just wait on me. God says, wait on me. And that's what God is saying to a lot of you today. Wait on me. I'm going to renew your strength. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to give back what you have lost. I'm going to give you what we call a divine recovery. Hallelujah. And sometimes God's going to give it back with extra to go with it. Listen, he says he will renew our strength. We'll mount up with the wings as of eagles. We will run and not get weary. We will walk and not faint. God said, I am a restorer. I'm your restorer. That's a good place to begin to pray. Father, I just thank you right now. You're the great restorer. Truly, as you told the prophet Isaiah to tell your children, there's no one like you. There was no creator of the universe except you. There's nobody that can understand a phantom everything you do. Who, who can do we have to compare to you? Nobody. Everybody that we say uh, was our idol or is our idol is either dead or is dying. But you, O oh Lord, never die and your strength is never depleted. You never grow old and you never lose, oh God, any of your wisdom nor of your knowledge. Oh God, today we recognize we are children in the hands of an almighty God and an omniscient God and a God that's present in all places. And how we give you thanks that you would save us, oh God, looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs and forgiving our many sins and allowing us, oh God, to be in the kingdom for such a time as this. Oh God, have mercy today. Hear our cries and give us faith to trust you for your grace and to remember that in, your, in the awesomeness of your all powerfulness, we will not lack, we will not be forgotten, we will not be cast aside, but you'll be by our side, just like you promised, to be with us always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Well, I'm so excited. I get excited when I talk about the greatness and the power of God. Listen. The right have a clue on what God was going to. I just came. I came to serve God's people. I didn't think, I would have never thought I'd still be here 36 years later. But who knows what God is going to do? I was testifying, and I've got about 20, 30 seconds. I was testifying, uh, talking with one of my colleagues about uh, my first time on the radio when I was a little kid reciting black poetry. And I never knew that God would have me on, on the radio four or five times a week, and that I build Facebook and YouTube, but you don't ever know what God's going to do. The power is in his hands. I just want to encourage you, trust in him and never doubt because the power is in his hands. That's all I have time for today. I want to thank you for being with me on this Wednesday. Remember, Black History Month for the nation begins tomorrow. 
but it is for those of us who are African Americans every day. Let's celebrate it. Let's talk it up. I've got on my uh, Black History bracelets uh, uh, on both of my wrists, and I'm planning to wear them the whole month. I'll take them off at night and put them back on in the day because we've got to celebrate what the Lord has done for us. It's our story and it's his story that he gave us. Bye-bye now.